Welcome along fellow time travelers and strange historians. This time around I'm going to share with you some of my favorite historic photos of New York City. In fact, in this episode I'm going to focus on, specifically, well, kind of, sort of, on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. Before I begin, please like and share this episode and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell and check out the links below to learn how to support my research and productions. Specifically, I'd appreciate it if you could become a member of my channel and or join me on Patreon. That way you get access to some exclusive content and you also get to, you know, support my research. You could also leave a super thanks in the comments below. Now, sit back and pour yourself a cup of coffee or a tankard of tea or a mug of mead or a chalice of cider or a flagon filled with any beverage of your choice and join your fellow strange historians around the campfire. As you may know, I have a large collection of historic photos, specifically those that showcase architectural history, as well as historic people and places. And, and as you could probably tell from my accent, I was born in New York City, and so I am familiar with New York City more than anywhere else on Earth. And so, during this series, I am going to show you some really Impressive images, I think, and I'll tell you about them, so let's get rolling. This image is circa 1865. It shows a bird's eye view of Manhattan. Now, images like this have always fascinated me. I mean, imagine the incredible skill of the artists who are able and were able to create this sort of thing. It's amazing, fascinating stuff, because you know, it looks like they went up in a hot air balloon or something and it's unlikely that they did. So really, really incredible. Now, I'm showing this image to not only, you know, give you an idea of how awesome images like this are, but also to give you, you know, kind of help you get your bearings for what and where we're going to be talking about. So from where we are while looking at this, that's Manhattan, dead center, okay? Manhattan straight ahead. Now, if you were able, if you're floating around in the air and you look behind you, there's Staten Island and Liberty Island, where the Statue of Liberty is. Obviously, you can't see it because it's behind you, but hey, I'll show those things in another video. Uh, to the left is New Jersey, and that's the Hudson River between Manhattan and New Jersey. You could actually go on that and go zooming on up. Well, not zooming, but you know, rowing, sailing, whatever it is you do on a boat, and head on up to upstate New York. So that's the Hudson, named after Henry Hudson. On the right is Brooklyn. And in the center right is Queens. And then between Manhattan and Brooklyn and Queens is the East River. Now, this next image shows Central Park as it appeared in 1872. From this perspective, you're hovering directly over, kind of, sort of, around the Great Lawn in Central Park. And you can see the Bow Bridge to the right. I'll, I'll, I'll have photos of these, you know, in the future. Not in this video, but in other ones. But uh, that's the Bow Bridge to the right. For those who don't know, the Bow Bridge spans over the lake. And it connects the Cherry Hill section on the east side of the park to the Ramble section on the west side. And you can see Belvedere Castle to the left. That castle was initially constructed as an observation tower and kind of, you know, a decorative structure. It was intended to offer visitors a vantage point from which they could enjoy scenic views of the park and beyond. And, you know, looking straight ahead, you can see the Bethesda Fountain and that terrace. So the centerpiece of Bethesda Terrace, it's the, well, you can see it's the Fountain of Bethesda, right? It's a magnificent bronze sculpture. It depicts an angel blessing the waters of the lake, symbolizing healing and purity. So I have photos of that that I'm also going to share in the future, many of which I shot on my own. On the far left, within the park, you can see Central Park Zoo. And on the far left, so outside of the Central Park, you can see the Upper East Side of Manhattan. And looking straight, you can see Central Park South and you can see Midtown. You can even go as far down, you can see as far down as downtown Manhattan right and even though it wasn't complete at the time in this artwork right when it was created you could see the brooklyn bridge on the far left
This image, circa 1886, shows the corner of 5th Avenue and East 59th Street. Now on the far left is the original Plaza Hotel, and that's before the new one was designed, right? The current one that was designed by Henry Janeway Hardenberg. The original hotel was kind of modest. It was eight stories, right? Eight story high building. And that only stood at the at this really like elite corner, right? I mean, this is some serious real estate. And it stood in that corner for about, I think it was 15 years because it was demolished in 1905. So it was built in 1890, demolished in 1905. And on the right, obviously, there you got Central Park. Now, looking further down, that's 59th Street right there. You could see a bit of the legendary Navarro Flats. Which I guess be pronounced Navarro Flats as well, right? What do you like better? Navarro and Navarro? Navarro? Navarro. Go with Navarro, right? Now yeah, we'll go with Navarro. Navarro? It's not there anymore, so who the heck knows how it's said. Well, let's just go with Navarro. Navarro? Navarro. Navarro. The Navarro Flats. Yeah. Navarro? Yeah, the Navarro Flats was an early example of apartment-style living. I get I have these marketing materials. Here's what it wrote. You ready? A most imposing pile of intensely substantial buildings, elaborated Spanish architecture with Moorish arches, numerous balconies, grand entrances, and highly ornamental facades. Unsurpassed interior appointments, so apartments, single and double floor, built for the wealthiest classes eight independent buildings and it was a co-op i'll talk more about this in another video there's a lot to talk about i actually know quite a bit about it there's not that many photos um i think i have probably every photo there is of this building so i'll post those in another another video so jumping to the other side of central park from here you got columbus circle now, this is a 1905 image. It shows Central Park on the right side. Now, Columbus Circle, for those who don't know, not everybody knows, I guess, right, was originally called Grand Circle. It was designed as a grand entryway to Central Park. It was kind of envisioned as a major traffic hub where several important avenues intersected. The circle was renamed Columbus Circle in 1892 to commemorate Christopher Columbus's... Christopher Columbus's, you know what I mean, 400th anniversary of arriving in the Americas. And you can see the tracks in the road for the trolleys. You can see some horse-drawn carriages. So this is a really cool image. I like this one. Now this image shows the west side of Columbus Avenue. This image from 1912 shows the northwest side of Columbus Circle. And that is the location of what we New Yorkers call the Upper West Side. This photo was taken in 1912, and you could see a Broadway. On the far right, you can see a platform, right, for the elevated train. And at the very far end of this photo, right there, kind of dead center, really, right? Uh, you can see the legendary Ansonia Hotel, which I'm going to discuss in a little while. By the way, I think every time I'm going to mention one of the buildings in this video, I'm just going to say legendary. Because to people like me, they're freaking legendary. And they're probably legendary to you too. This photo was taken in or around 1900 from within Central Park. And you can see people ice skating on the pond which is pretty cool. They don't allow that anymore, by the way. So if you're thinking, hey, I'm going to go to Manhattan when it's icy cold and skate around on that pond, ain't going to happen. Just telling you. Just telling you. Don't worry. You can go ice skating in Central Park. It's cool. So to the right, you can see the legendary Dakota Apartments. That's right. I said legendary. To the right is the, the Hotel Majestic, the legendary Hotel Majestic, which is not the same as the Majestic that is there today. And to the left of that is the Bernard. Now, this is cool. To give you an idea of the Upper West Side, you know, and how it looked around the time, this photo was taken from the roof of the Dakota and shows the view looking north. I don't, 
The Dakota was completed in 1884, so this one I think was taken probably 1890, maybe, roughly around that time. You could see all the undeveloped land in the foreground. You could see the tracks of the L train on the far left along Columbus Avenue. On the far right is 8th Avenue, now known as Central Park West. And the building in the center, it belonged then and belongs now to the American Museum of Natural History. Now listen. I don't want to go on a rampage here, okay? But for those of you who do not know how I feel about the American Museum of Natural History, I think it sucks. I hate to say it. I hate to say it. But most of the boring displays have not changed in probably 50 to 100 years. Oh, God. The curators should be ashamed of themselves. Today, you know what it is? It's a museum of a museum. That's what it is. If you wanted to see what an ugly, horrible, boring, dreadful, depressing, dark, loathsome museum was like a hundred years ago, go to the American Museum of Natural History today because it's the same freaking way. I mean, I'm serious. A law should be passed that for the rest of eternity, they shouldn't be allowed to charge more than a dollar to tour that horrible freaking place because that's all it's worth. It, probably not even worth a buck. I'm not kidding. I hate to say it. I mean, I grew up going to that museum. School trips, elementary school, middle school. I'm not kidding. School trips. Go to the planetarium, go to the museum. It was freaking boring when I was a kid. It's They just haven't kept up with the times. It's boring for adults. It's boring for kids. I feel bad for tourists who get suckered into paying to enter this miserable place. Save your money. Trust me on this. Go to any other museum. Go to the Met. The other side of Central Park. Go to the go to the Met, and you won't be disappointed. That's worth a zillion dollars more. Let's move on. Uh, That's a close up of that horrible building. Well, it's, actually, it's not the building's fault. It's a nice building still. A close up of that building. It's what they've done to it. That's horrible, as seen from the east. And here is another angle taken from the northeast. Clearly, the land still being excavated at the time that this photo was taken. This is a great photo on a postcard. It shows two of my favorite buildings on the Upper West Side. And let me tell you, that's saying a lot. I have a lot of favorite buildings, and these two are way up there. So in the foreground, you're on Broadway, right? So you can see a trolley car, and to the right, you can see a horse-drawn carriage. On the far right is the, say it with me, legendary Doralton. Oh, the Doralton. Oh my, if you, you know, if you live in the Doralton and you want to have me over for coffee or tea or scones, please contact me. Oh, please do. Please. I'd, I'd so appreciate it. Please do. Contact me. I'm not difficult to reach. Go click on the about section right there on my channel and click. You can see it'll give you my email. Shoot me an email. Invite me over, please. Uh, on the far left can be seen the southeast corner of the Ansonia, which is pretty cool. And dead center can be seen the entry to the subway on West 72nd Street between Broadway running to the left and Amsterdam Avenue along the right. And this is a great image of the legendary Doralton as seen from the southwest. This image is from across Broadway. It shows the entry along West 71st Street. This building is situated, yeah, I mean, situated in the northwest corner of Broadway and West 71st Street on, obviously, Upper West Side. Construction was completed in 1902. It was designed as a luxury apartment building. And boy, it sure is. And it still functions as one today. The apartments within the building are known for their unique layouts and architectural details. And in 1983, the building was designated a New York City landmark due to its architectural significance and historical importance. By the way, before I go any further, like I said, I'm going to produce other videos like this one with images of close-ups of many of these buildings, the architectural elements and details, especially photos that I took myself. So stay tuned, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, become a member, join me on Patreon. I'd really appreciate it. There's a lot of work gathering all these images together, piecing this together. So any, uh, you know, support you could give certainly would be much appreciated.
If you're like me, you love floor plans, and this image shows the layout of the Doralton, and so this will be interesting to you, right? And remember, when these buildings were being designed, the whole idea of living in luxury apartments in New York City was a new thing, and the architects were having quite the time trying to figure out the best way to design them for the benefit of the residents. So, you know, it's kind of cool looking at these old floor plans and getting an idea of, you know, okay, what do we do with this? Because, you know, you got the walls that just ain't moving, right? And it's a totally different lifestyle how people were living in apartments in the early days in, the, you know, the early 1900s, late 1800s. So we'll talk about that another time. This is an artist's rendering of the Hotel Majestic, located on the corner of 8th Avenue, now known as Central Park West, and West 72nd Street. So, it's located, or was located, directly across the street to the south of the Dakota. And as you can see, um, it's, uh, you know, Beaux Arts architectural style. It was really popular during the late 19th and early 20th century. It's characterized by, I mean, it's grandeur, it's got ornate details, great artistic elements. The Hotel Majestic was built in 1894, right? Not there anymore. Like I said, there's a, another Majestic building there today, which is, which is really beautiful as well. This photo shows the construction of the subway at Broadway and West 73rd Street. This is an important photo because a lot of people, or maybe even you, who knows, are probably under the impression that the subway, New York subways anyway, were, you know, maybe a bunch of, I don't know, gnomes, whatever, you know, humans, uh, who knows, uh, whatever was working, digging tunnels beneath the ground. And, and that's, that's been done. It's not like that hasn't been done. That's the thing. But this photo shows the use of the cut and cover technique. So for those of you who don't know how that works, you got the initial phase, right? You got a trench or, you know, the excavation is dug into the ground at a desired depth and dimensions for the structure. And this trench could be quite deep. Yeah, quite wide, quite deep, depending on the purpose and size of the structure being built. Now, once the trench is dug, the structural elements of the underground space are constructed within it. So for subway construction, that would involve building the station platforms, the tracks, the walls, and all the necessary infrastructure. And to prevent the walls of the trench from collapsing during construction, various support systems are used. So that can include shoring and bracing and, you know, all kinds of temporary structures that help maintain the integrity of the trench walls. Now, after the structure is built and secured, the trench is then covered back up. And this can involve backfilling the trench with soil or gravel or other materials. And depending on the location and the use, the covering might also involve restructuring roads and sidewalks or other surfaces on top of the newly constructed structure. Once the covering is complete, the area can be integrated back into the urban environment. So in this case, right, in the case of subway stations, you got entrances and exits and other facilities are constructed on the surface in order to provide access to the underground station, right? The underground subway. Now on the far side of this photo can be seen the east side of the Ansonia. I actually didn't expect to talk so much about cut and cover and subway construction. So now I feel obligated in future videos. Remind me if I don't do it, but I'll probably remember I've got all kinds of stuff with the, with subways, so we'll we'll do that as well. That'll be cool. In fact, you know what? Here's an elevation of the east side of the Ansonia before it was built, showing the elaborate top of the roof that, by the way, was never completed. And this is a photo of the southeast side of the legendary Ansonia, then known as the Ansonia Hotel. And this was a black and white photo, but I used select colorization. Doesn't that sound fancy schmancy? To highlight the beauty of the building. The Ansonia was built between 1899 and 1904. It was originally designed as a luxury hotel and apartment complex. When it first opened, the Ansonia was primarily 
a luxury hotel. It offered opulent accommodations. However, it also featured a lot of apartments which catered to the growing trend of upscale residential living in the city. This photo was colorized and also shows the southeast side of the Ansonia from across Amsterdam Avenue. Looking along the street, you can see the canopies along the ground level. And this is a colorized photo of the northeast side of the Ansonia. And this photo shows the exterior of the legendary Apthorpe. Yes, I said Apthorpe. Isn't that a fun thing to say? Say Apthorpe. Go ahead. A-P-T-H-O-R-P. -P. I dare you. I don't care where you are right now. Work, home, whatever. Say Apthorpe ten times really fast. Apthorpe, Apthorpe, Apthorpe. Ap if you could do it, send me a... Let me know in the comments below if you're able to do it. Apthorpe ten times really fast without messing it up. If you could do it, let me know in the comments below. I'd really appreciate it. The Apthorpe Apartments, uh, it was built between 1908 and 1909, obviously luxury residential building, and you can see it features, you know, Renaissance revival architectural style. You got the, you know, characterized by ornate facade and grand entrances and really intricate details. What's cool is that it spans the entire block between Broadway and West End Avenue, between 78th and West 79th Streets. It was designed as a full block structure. And here's the cool thing, you ready? It's got a large courtyard in the center. And yes, I got photos. Watch future videos. Actually, if you're listening to this in the future, those future videos that I keep mentioning might already exist. So if that's the case, just look around my channel and you might find them. The building was considered innovative for its time due to its incorporation of really modern amenities like electricity. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's kind of modern back then. Central heating and indoor plumbing. See, you take things for granted, don't you? You do. You know you do. You take things for granted. Once upon a time, something like having electricity and central heating and indoor plumbing was a big freaking deal, right? And here you are listening to my voice and you're saying to yourself you don't even think it's like magic how's this happening some guy somewhere don't know where new york somewhere recording into a microphone it's this little thing in the microphone's vibrating it's going through some kind of wire it's recording somehow however that kind of magical stuff happens it's going into this computery thing and here i am somewhere else in the world in the future from when that guy recorded it, which is me. And it's like magic, right? Texting is magic. Your phone is magic. All of this stuff around you, it's like freaking magic. And you take it totally for granted, right? It's like perfectly normal. But once upon a time, electricity, central heating, and indoor plumbing were amenities. Cool, right? Okay, let's go on. This is perhaps the most famous photo of the legendary Dakota apartment building located on the corner of West 72nd Street and 8th Avenue, now known as Central Park West. For those of you who don't already know, I've written some books about the Dakota apartment building. So if you have a desperate desire to own a book about the Dakota, go on Amazon, type up Dakota apartment building book and buy one with my name on it. Don't buy ones with anybody else's name on it, just, just mine. Uh, this photo was taken from the southeast corner across 8th Avenue. On the far left is the property where the Hotel Majestic will soon be built. Right? You've already seen the Hotel Majestic, but when this photo was taken, the Hotel Majestic was not yet built. And so that's where it would be. See where that fence is. On the far left can be seen row houses. You see it back there behind the building? Those were also built by Edward C. Clark who built the Dakota, and designed by Henry Janeway Hardenberg, who designed the Dakota. I've done plenty of videos about the Dakota that you could listen to, and I'm going to do others with more photos and floor plans and information, because I know people are fascinated by it. In fact, like I just said a little while ago, if you're listening to this in the future, just search my channel and 
They'll probably be done by the time you're listening to this. If you're listening in the future. If you're just listening a few days later or weeks, no chance. But, you know, in the future, yeah. They'll be there. This photo shows the east side of the Dakota and a portion of the south side. This photo was taken from within Central Park. And earlier I posted a photo that was taken from the roof of the Dakota showing the view looking north. Remember with the museum? This photo was also taken from the roof of the Dakota and shows the view looking south. This photo has been colorized and shows some small buildings and shops and empty lots in the foreground. And then you got 8th Avenue, today Central Park West, and Central Park on the far left. So I love this photo. I love all these photos and I hope you did too. And so this concludes this episode of Historic Photos showcasing historic New York architecture on the Upper West Side. Kindly remember to like and share and subscribe and hit the notification bell. And check out the links below to learn how to support my research and productions. Specifically, I'd really appreciate it if you could become a member of my channel and or join me on Patreon. You could also leave a super thanks in the comments below. Kindly be kind to all non-human animals and please don't eat them. They don't like that. And please do yourself a favor and go to a local shelter and adopt a cat or a dog. You and they will be very glad that you did. Until next time. My fellow time travelers and strange historians, I wish you safe travels on all your journeys.